Hey, hey, this is Julian and you are on In The Blocks. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can create a Web3 contract instance. So a Web3 contract instance is an object that is produced by Web3 and that will allow you to interact with your smart contract. So you might think, why can't we directly interact with our smart contract by using the Web3 object itself? Well, the problem is that for each smart contract, they have their own addresses and their own set of function and Web3 can't possibly know all about that. So you will need to teach Web3 how to interact with your smart contract. And you're going to do this by giving it two pieces of information. The first one is the address of your smart contract. And second one is what we call the ABI. So the ABI is a JSON document that describe all the function of your smart contract that can be called from outside the blockchain. All right, so let's see how this works with some code. So this is a Truffle project that I've prepared for this video. So if you never heard of Truffle before, that's the most popular framework for creating a Solidity smart contract on the Ethereum blockchain. And if you want a quick introduction, you can check out my introduction video on that. So in this project, I have a very simple smart contract. Let's see what is inside. So here we have an integer variable. Then we have two public functions. So get data, we can get the value of this variable and set data, we can modify this variable. And we also have a private function that also modify this data, but we don't really care what it does. The point of creating this function is that I want to show you the difference between functions that are public and private when it comes to interacting with our smart contract. All right, so let's get out of here. All right, so I've created another terminal window because I'm going to need to start a local Ganache instance for our local blockchain. So let's create our contract instance. So I'm going to open a file that I've prepared. So I've, I've already installed Web3 in my project. I've already created the Web3 object. If you don't know how this works, you can check out the previous video of this series. I explained all of this. So now with our Web3 object, we can create our contract instance. So let's define a variable that we're going to call contract. So it works like this, you use the new keyword, then web 3eastcontract with a uppercase C. And then there is a required argument, which is the ABI of the smart contract and an optional argument, which is the address of the smart contract. So the ABI will teach Web3 how to communicate with a smart contract. It will define all the functions of the smart contract that can be called by Web3. And the address uniquely identify a specific smart contract on the blockchain. By the way, this argument is actually optional because in, for some cases, you just want to create a contract instance that doesn't point to any specific contract on the blockchain. But after with this contract instance, you can deploy con uh, instance of the smart contract on the blockchain. But in most cases, you probably want to point to an already existing contract. So you, you're going to need these two arguments. So where are we going to find this info? Very good question. So let's go to our other terminal and we're going to run the truffle compile command and it's going to compile our smart contract and after that you should have a build directory and inside this build directory there is a contracts folder and here you will see all the abis that were produced by the compilation step so migration.json is just a smart contract used internally by the Truffle framework. You can just ignore it. But the one we care about is mycontract.json. So let's open it and see what is inside. So build contract mycontract.json. All right. So first you find the name of the smart contract and then you find the ABI. So that's one of the arguments that we will need to create our contract instance with Web3. That's what you see here. So this API is just a JSON document that describe all the publicly accessible function of our smart contract. So here you can see uh, get data, uh, you can see uh, the, the different type of uh, argument it accepts. So 
for example, for Galeda, there is none, but then we can see also the return type. So here we can see that there is a single return type and, and other parameter related to this function. And if we scroll down, we see another function called set data, but we don't see the private function because the private function can only be called from inside the blockchain. So from inside another smart contract, so that is not included in the ABI. If you keep scrolling down in this JSON object, so you will see other stuff that are quite scary. So actually this JSON object produced by the Truffle compile command contain not only the API, but also a lot of other information that are not just for programmer, but some of them are also for some smart contract tool like source map, metadata, etc. So you can ignore most of the info in this JSON document. All you care about is the ABI and the deployed address. So the deployed address, you will not see anything now because we haven't deployed our smart contract. So let's scroll down and here deploy address after it will appear in the network ski here. So we are going to deploy our smart contract and we're going to see this network key changing. So let's start a Ganache instance with the truffle develop command. All right. And today, unfortunately, I have a problem with my truffle console. But for you, it's probably going to work. So once the truffle console is ready, you're going to run migrate dash dash reset. So you're going to see some output in your terminal. And once this is over, so you're going to see the network key changing. So this is another project that I use just to show you because I have this problem with truffle. But basically, you're going to see an entry appearing. So here you're going to have the ID of the network that you deploy to. And then very importantly, you'll have the address of the smart contract. So now we are going to import all this info in our other file. OK, so first we need to import the JSON file produced by Truffle. So usually we call this by the same name of our smart contract with an uppercase. So my contract and we're going to require so this is in a build folder, a contracts directory, and this is my contract dot JSON. OK, and so the ABI is directly on my contract, so that's easy. However, for address, we have to do a bit more work. So first we need the network ID where we deploy our smart contract. So we can get this easily by calling web 3eethnetget ID. And then we're going to extract the network where this is deploy. So deploy network. This is going to be my contract dot networks. And we're going to pass network ID. And finally, this is going to be in deployed network dot address. Oh, and by the way, because we're using the await keyword, we need to wrap this in an async function. Otherwise, Node.js is not going to be happy. All right. And then we call init like this. And boom, we have our Web3 contract instance. And so now with this contract instance, we can interact with our smart contract. By the way, if you want to easily memorize everything you need to know about Web3 as a blockchain developer, you can download my Web3 cheat sheet. This is totally free. You can find the link in the description. All right, that's it for this tutorial on how you can create a Web3 contract instance. In the next video, I'm going to show you how you can make use of this contract instance by calling a function in your smart contract. Thanks for watching. See you for the next video.